This program is one of a series which accompanies the General Electric LM2500 instructions for the replacement of the variable stator vane actuator and is designed as a supplement to the printed work package found in the maintenance manual. The LM2500 features two identical variable stator vane actuators located on the right and left sides of the gas turbine at the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock positions on the high pressure compressor stators. These actuators are interchangeable and the replacement procedure is the same for each. In this demonstration, the actuator at the 9 o'clock position, aft looking forward, will be replaced. Before beginning, it may be necessary to loosen one or more of the clamps on the actuator tubes to ease the actuator removal. To remove the actuator, start by taking a 9 16 inch open end wrench and disconnecting the head end oil tube from the actuator. Allow the residual oil to drain into a plastic container. Next, disconnect the rod end oil manifold and the drain tube from the drain manifold. Drain off the residual oil into the container. Remove the drain manifold from the actuator. Continuing on, disconnect the rod end oil tube from the rod end port. Now that the three tubes are disconnected, install a clean, small diameter hose over the unions in the ports of the actuator from the head end to the rod end. The hose should measure approximately 5 inches in length and 3 8 inches inside diameter. The purpose of the hose is to prevent oil from squirting onto personnel or the gas turbine. Proceeding with the removal of the actuator, take out the bolt, the nut, and the washers, which attach the actuator to the mounting bracket. Use a 9 16 inch open end wrench and a half inch 12 point socket and ratchet. Slowly retract the actuator rod to its fully closed position and pivot the actuator away from the gas turbine. This will provide better access to the mounting bracket bolts. Next, remove the five nuts, bolts, and washers that secure the mounting bracket to the gas turbine. Use a half inch open end wrench, a 3 8 inch 12 point socket and extension, and a ratchet. Then, remove the second bolt below the split line of the compressor casing. Now the bracket may be rotated slightly and slid off of the guide. Turn the 
guide 90 degrees and slide it and the actuator off of the trunnion of the actuator lever. When the actuator is free, remove the short hose from the unions, draining the collected oil into a plastic container. Now the two unions in the ports also may be removed, along with their O-rings. If the actuator is to be replaced with a new one, check to be sure that the part numbers of the old and the new actuators are the same. This is important because the actuator must be compatible with the speed sensor installed on the gas generator. If the part numbers are not identical, an adjustment of the actuator rod end will be required. Improper actuator rod adjustment will cause off-schedule variable stator vane operation, which could cause a compressor stall. If an adjustment is necessary, refer to the maintenance manual for the proper procedure and specifications. Now lubricate and install a new O-ring onto each of the two unions. Install the unions into the new actuator, one into the head end port, the other into the rod end port. The union should be torqued to 90 to 110 inch pounds. When the unions are in place, install the short hose between them. Now the actuator rod end may be installed over the actuator lever or trunnion. Before installing the guide, make sure that the raised letters spelling aft on the face of the guide are facing aft when it is installed. Incorrect assembly may cause the actuating system to bind. Install the guide onto the actuator lever and turn the guide 90 degrees. Next, lubricate the five bolts of the mounting bracket with mill T5544. Then slide the mounting bracket over the guide Secure the bracket to the front frame with the bolts, nuts, and washers. Torque the bolts to 200 to 210 inch-pounds. Now, place the actuator against the mount bracket so that the lug on the bracket is between the lugs on the actuator. Place a thick washer onto the actuator mount bolt. Insert the bolt through the lugs with the bolt head forward. Then, put a thin washer onto the end of the bolt, followed by a nut. Torque this nut to 145 to 155 inch-pounds. The small plastic hose now may be removed from the port unions.
The O-ring on the rod end oil tube should be replaced with a new lubricated one. Connect the rod end oil tube to the rod end union. And torque the coupling to 135 to 150 inch pounds. Safety wire the coupling nut to the port union. The drain manifold is the next to receive a new lubricated O-ring. When it is in place, connect the drain manifold to the rod end port, making sure that the drain fitting points down. Hand tighten the coupling nut. Now, reconnect the three oil tubes to the actuator. The drain tube goes to the drain manifold. The rod end oil manifold goes to the rod end. And the head end oil tube goes to the head end. Torque all of the couplings to 135 to 150 inch-pounds. Safety wire the drain manifold nut to the head end oil tube coupling nut. If any of the bolts on the clamps were loosened during the removal of the actuator, tighten them back up in place and torque them to 24 to 27 inch-pounds. Finally, keep an eye on all of the connections while performing a check for oil leaks. When all of the connections have been found to be leak-proof, the replacement of the variable stator vane actuator is complete. For more detailed information about any part of this procedure, refer to the maintenance manual for the General Electric LM2500 gas turbine.